Hello friends, I am Niyati Pant of class 3 and today I am going to read you a story from The 50 Greatest Short Stories for Children. The story's title is The Precious Stove. It is an Austrian folk tale. Peter lived with his mother and father and his brothers and sisters in an old wooden cottage deep in the woods of Austria. They were very poor and the cottage had hardly any furniture. They might have been very cold in winters, were it not for their most treasured possession, a stove. This was no ordinary stove. It was made of white porcelain and it was tall. The gold crown at the top almost created the ceiling. Its feet were carved like lion's claws, the talons painted gold, the sides of the stove were painted with flowers and rare birds in glowing colors, and the door was tiled in blue and gold. It looked very out of place in the poor wooden cottage, for it had originally been made for a king's palace. And so it did but many years before. Peter's grandfather had rescued it after a great war from the ruins of the palace where he used to work. Peter used to drop copies of the flowers and birds on pieces of brown paper with a stub of old pencil. One evening, as Peter and the sister Gilda lay curled up in the warmth at the foot of the stove, their father came in shaking the snow from his boots. He looked tired and ill. My children, this is the last night you will be able to enjoy our beautiful stove, he said sadly. Tomorrow it will be taken away as I have had to sell it. We have no money left and we need food more than we need a grand stove. The children were horrified, but their father would not change his, change his mind. That night, instead of banking up the stove to keep it burning warmly through the night, he let the fire die down so it was quiet cold in the morning. In time, the traders arrived and loaded the stove onto a cart and off it rumbled down the tracks, track towards the town. Peter's mother and father looked at the handful of gold coins the traders had given them and shook their heads. It seemed a poor bargain when all was said and done. Peter and Gilda whispered together outside, behind the wood pile. You have to follow the car, Peter, said Gilda, so you can see where our stove goes. So Peter rushed off down the track after the cart, pausing only to stuff a couple of apples into his pocket. The journey into town was slow as the stove was heavy, but by evening it had reached the railway station. Peter crept as close as he dared and heard the traders arranging for the stove to go to Vienna by train the very next morning. He made up his mind very quickly. Once the traders had gone to an inn for the night, he clambered up and inside the stove. There was plenty of room inside for a small boy, and he knew that air would come in from the grill at the top, under the golden crown. He soon fell fast asleep. When he woke up, the train was moving fast. It sped through snowy forests and passed the mighty Danube River. Peter munched his apples and wondered what his parents would be thinking. And just where he was going to end up, 
and then what could he do anyway to keep the stove for his family eventually the train came to a halt with much banging and clattering all the boxes around the stove were unloaded onto the platform then peter heard the gruff voice say have a care there that's valuable stove is going to the palace take care it isn't damaged in any way or it will be the worse for you the palace peter's knees shook the palace why that was where the king lived peter sat as quiet as a mouse as he left the stove lifted up off the train and on to another cart it clattered through cobbled streets and over a wooden bridge and then came to a halt many voices came to the grill as the stove was moved off the cart my word the king will be pleased look what a fine stove it is said one voice it must have come from a palace originally look at the golden crown at the top said another then there was silence for a while peter strained his ears and his knees shook a little more then he heard the swishing of long ropes on a polished floor and the murmur of voices followed by a deep hush truly it is a very beautiful stove i did not expect it to be so fine look at the quality of the painting round the sides i said a deep important voice and then the handle of the door turned and light flooded into the stove peter tumbled out into the floor as the deep voice said good gracious what have what have we here there is a child in the stove peter picked himself up and looked up into the eyes that were full of laughter They belonged to a man dressed in a bright red jacket with great gold tassels and gold buttons. Many glittering medals gleamed on his chest. A great silver sword hung by his side. It was a king. Peter was absolutely terrified, but the king kept on smiling. "Well, my boy, Would you like to tell me how you came to be inside my new stove? A servant rushed forward, grabbed Peter by the arm, meaning to drag him away, but the king raised his hand and the man stepped back. "Let the child speak," said the king. "Well, once Peter found his tongue, he could not stop. He told the king all about the stove. how it had stood in their poor cottage for as long as he could remember how much the family welcomed its heat in the winter and he told the king that his father had been forced to sell the stove for a few gold pieces to buy food the king listened to peter in silence and said peter i am not going to give you back your stove for it belongs here in the palace but i will give your father several bags of gold for it is a very valuable stove and perhaps you would like to stay here and look after it for me peter was delighted and he looked after the stove for the king from that day on his family never wanted food again and every summer they would all come to stay at the palace to see peter and the stove of course when the king discovered how good peter was at drawing he sent him to art school and he became a very fine artist but when he was an old man all his grandchildren wanted to hear was the story of how he had come to vienna inside the stove thank you